so the benefit of being open is life-changing. And by open, I mean present. I mean now, I mean here. It's difficult sometimes, and it's definitely been difficult in my life. But I'd like to share that story with you, and I'd like to thank you. It's really an honor to be here. So a while ago, and one evening, I was washing my windows. And it's actually something that I enjoy doing. And there was a knock at the door, and I didn't want to answer it. But something told me that I should answer it and that it would be worth it. So I did, and it was. I open the door, and there's this woman there, this small woman, and she's giving me mixed messages. In her face, I can see that she's very committed to her cause. But her body language is telling me that she's tired, that she's broken. And that voice says, again to me, it says, give this woman some space. Let her in. And so I let her in. And as I am walking to the kitchen table, I'm thinking to myself, you know, this is a good, this is a good cause. I know this cause. She's passionate about it, raising awareness. It's a Denver charity. It's one I give to. I'm happy to do it. I enjoy doing it. And I'm also thinking, where's my checkbook? Because I need to write a check. This will probably take four to five minutes. I'll write a check. She'll say thanks. And I'll send her on her way and say good luck. We talked around that kitchen table for 30 minutes. And when I say talk, it's really not the truth. I just listen. I just listened to her and her explain her experience of so much humanity, yet so much apathy, door after slamming door after slamming door. And it was something else. I was able to learn in this experience of 30 minutes something that was so fantastic and it changed me. It was a wonderful thing. Because this time I made the choice to be there, to be present, and to listen. And I'm better for that. But I, I was, not always, was not always that way. So I want you to picture this, right? Picture a nice black shirt, pressed gray slacks, black shoes, new black shoes. They are not comfortable, <laughs> but they're new, and they're mine, and they're expensive, and this is my costume. It's the costume of the 29-year-old consultant. <laughs> yeah, right? Because the lawyer jokes at that time were on the way out, and they were being backfilled by the consultant jokes. <laughs> okay, the world was all about me and what I did and the work that I had to do. So I hopped in my cab, which was the usual. We head downtown, and I'm reading the paper, and whatever, I'm not really seeing anything. But there's something through the windshield of the cab, and I look at that, and I, huh? that's weird. You don't see that every day. It's definitely strange, but it's not my problem. But there's smart people here, and they'll fix that. I don't know how, and really I don't care, but they'll fix it. So I continue on, you know, in a city of seven million people, I don't see anything, because it's about me, it's about what I'm doing, it's about the work that I have to do. So I hop out of the cab, and I keep walking. Again, not really seeing anything. And then it happens. The ground shook with an un uncontrollable urge, and it came through my soul. And I look behind me, and there is this cloud of dust and debris, and it is gobbling up streets and buildings, and it is moving fast. And I run. And I run, and I look behind me again, and it is almost there. And the only thing that I can do is dive behind this van. I dive behind this van, and then black. Complete darkness. I can't breathe. I can't see. And I think I am going to 
Interestingly enough, I also think my wife is going to kill me. <laughs> Here, alone, by myself, and I'm sad. So somehow I make it back to my hotel, and somehow I make it into the elevator, and we start to go up, and I hear this voice, and it says, you were there. And I, I look up, and there's this middle-aged couple, and I say, oh, yeah, you can tell him I just got my shot. <laughs> and he says, no, it's not that shirt wrapped around your waist or that you're covered in head to toe in dust. And he looks me right in the eye, both of them. And he says, you are shaking like a leaf, man. Shaking like a leaf. At that moment, he saw right exactly inside who I was. It took about a good 10 months after 9-11 for me to, to pull out. And it was a dark time, and it was not a fun experience. I had so much weight on my shoulders. I had such this thought that I had to do something great if I was spared. I couldn't just cure cancer. I had to cure them all. That's what I had to do. But you know what? I started to just open up my eyes and my ears. And I started to just look around and be present and see the things that were around me for what they were, what they truly were. And the reason I'm sharing this story with you is, is not because you need to go through some catastrophic event. You don't need to do that. I'm sharing it with you so that you may benefit from what I learned. And what I learned was you do not have to make a, to make a difference in this world, you do not have to do something huge. It just has to be something small. Because you never know what the package is that's going to be delivered. You never know what's going to happen. All you have to do is make the choice that this time you will be open. And this time you will hear it. So let me take you back to that kitchen table. A couple of days after that, I received a gift. And that gift was a letter. And I brought it, and I would just like to share some of it with you. I'm not used to the mic, so. And I'm paraphrasing somewhat, but. It was from the woman that I had the conversation with. It says, thank you so much for holding space for me last week. It was such a gift to let it all go before I had to take it up again. You made me feel seen and heard. In fact, the conversation we had inspired me so much that I have let it be part of who I am. I, there's no words to that. I'm humbled, honored. Because you know what? Before I received this, that experience was mine. I was the winner in that 30-minute exchange. I was the one that won. I learned. Yet, it's a win-win, right? Because somebody else did it. Somebody else in this 30-minute experience, almost meaningless, they changed for the better. Because a human contact, a simple, simple conversation of seeing. So now I want to do something. It is time to participate, sorry, but it will not last long. <laughs> I did this a while ago after consulting days, and it's, a, it's just a fun thing to do. So what I want you to do is look to the person on your left or your right. You'll have to choose. And what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you look right into their eyes for two seconds. And if someone doesn't have one, I'll do it with you after, OK? Right into their eyes for two seconds. We ready? Go. All 
All right, perfect. Great, you did fantastic. You did fantastic. So what did you what did you feel? What did you feel? I mean, did, did you was it good? Was it bad? Was it was it uncomfortable? Did you feel nothing at all? The point is it's not what you felt. The point is that you saw that person. And more importantly, that person was seen. So I drive through a Starbucks. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Couple weeks ago, I'm kind of preparing for this, for this talk and running ideas through my head. And I drive through, and as I'm getting my coffee, I ask the guy, I say, "So tell me, how many times does somebody ask you how your day is? How many times do they do that?" He says, "Never, hardly ever, not not very often." He says, "You're the first person that has to actually, because people take their coffee way too seriously." <laughs> Do you know that Starbucks, on a daily basis, serves 4.7 million customers a day? Think about the possibilities of some seamless positive interaction with another person. Think about the power that that has. Think about the power that it has in your life to make a, to make a decision, to make a choice, to say, I'm going to have just one positive, one more positive interaction today with somebody. Now, I'm not saying that we're going to solve wars or that we're going to end hunger or world peace, but maybe. I don't know. I mean, think about how many great problems could be solved just by a meaningless, positive interaction. Think about how many great companies could be built Think about that one instance where you give that high school senior a little bit of oomph and self-confidence, and they take a test, and they ace it, and they get into college. I don't know. Maybe. But what I do know is that's what inspires me, and that's what I try to do on a daily basis. I don't always, but I try to. In my personal life, with my beautiful wife, my family, my mother, my friends, in my business life, with my customers and my employees and my vendors. I make a choice to try to do that as best that I can. This time, I make that choice. And so I want to leave you with a quote, a famous quote by a four-year-old boy. And it says, Daddy, Watch me hit this baseball. And I did just that. This time, every time. Thank you.